Alright, welcome back to another Cool Loser Tech video. Today's segment is going to be on tips and tricks you might not know about your Android phone. In this segment, I'm going to cover how to take off defaults, how to change your keyboard settings, what soft key buttons do, how to get a separate messenger app for your text messages, how to set your Wi-Fi uh, lock screens, how to delete messages, what on and off buttons do, other shortcuts how to manage applications, how to send them to your SD card, how to set live wallpapers, how to set widgets, how to turn on and off your 3G data, some info on my custom CyanogenMod mod ROM, and some rooting benefits. So keep your eyes and ears close as I try my best to explain and help you guys out. And before I get on that, this is a live wallpaper called Solar Winds Live Wallpaper. And this is the HTC Google Nexus One, the actual first Nexus One phone that came out for Google, so it's pure Google on it, and I've customized a lot on it. So you have docs down there that I can bring down and pull up. That is a AW EX launcher that I have that with, so if you like that kind of thing, you can even scroll through the other side. And the icons that you see, this is a theme for Cyanogen Mod 7, so you have to be rooted with a custom ROM to get that. So that's basically the interface up here. And a lot of people ask me, how come I have colored? How come it's not white or gray? Or why is it different colors? It's because Cyanogen Mod allows me to change my icons on here. So that's a lot of benefits of rooting. And a lot of people ask me, hey, help me to root my phone. I actually can't help you root your phone because every other phone make and model has different methods of rooting your phone. And I don't want to be liable on you breaking your phone because rooting does void your warranty but it's not a bad thing rooting is reversible i just don't know all the methods for every phone out there and a lot of people ask me questions that they can actually find out on their own i know they want my help but you could also google things instead of waiting for my response so obviously i'm doing something great for the android community and i'm happy to be here and help every one of you defaults i get a lot of people saying how do you take off the default of something that you've installed because you can't get to it. Where you want to go is go into your settings. I'm using swipe pad. Check it out. Swipe pad to go into any of my custom set applications. And you can see there I have 12. Swipe pad allows me to be in any application no matter what I'm doing. I can open up this thing. It's great. Get on the market. So let's go to settings. I have a shortcut. And now I want to go into applications. Inside application settings you will see this setup that I have. It might be different than yours. You want to go into manage applications and you can see here this is your downloaded area and here are all your applications, what's on your SD card and what's running right now. We want to go to all. Since I'm rooted I'm capable of deleting system apps so I deleted them and I don't actually have stock launcher that comes with this but if I wanted to let's say that ADW launcher was my stock I'm going to click on it you want to go all the way where you see clear defaults. This is a set default that I put. That is how I got defaulted. So you want to clear default. And once you do that, you press home again, you'll get the pop-ups again of the other home launchers. Before uh, you guys go on clicking a whole bunch of different things here, you want to make sure you don't click on clear data. Everything will erase and I'll be starting like branding like I just installed the applications. If you want to move this application to SD card, you can. Not all applications can send to the SD card. I think only 2.2 and up devices can do that. You can uninstall the applications from here or force off the application as well. Now, I want to remind you guys about the soft keys down here. These all can be set to do different things. With my CyanogenMod, mods, I'm allowed to set different actions for these buttons down here. Now, all of us Android devices can use this as a stock feature as you hold down on home you will see your recent applications and you can go right to them and you can hold down on your menu button and you will see that you can pop up a keyboard now I think that is pretty much on every Android phone and you can press a button and it comes up with anything that has to do with a letter G on it if I have this application right here open which is called ultimate faves pro where I show all my applications Cyanogen allows me to hold this down and end the application by force closing by holding down on the back button. Now stock Android phones do not do that. This is a rooted feature. And since I said that you can hold down the menu and bring up your keyboard, which the keyboard I will tell you in a little bit, you guys can press the search button and it'll do the same thing what this does. So what I did is changed the function of this. And the function that I set up for this is to bring up my text messages. So it's a dedicated key for my text messages. Click on that 
and it goes right to my text messages. Keyboards. Let's go to settings. And I want to go down to where it says language and keyboard. Once I'm in language keyboard, you will see I have Swift Key X. This is a paid application. This is my personal favorite keyboard that I love for my Nexus One because it predicts your next word. It saves your sentences. So whatever you've said before, if you want to say it again, all you got to just keep clicking the same button and it already predicts it for you. It's awesome. Let's say I just downloaded the application and this was my stock keyboard. But let's do Swift Key X. Click on it. It'll say, oh, it has this and this and that, so you're okay, you're okay. So now it's there. Now what? Is it ready? Not really. Let's go into my Google+. Plus. I'm going to do a stream, and I want to type in something. And here you see the stock Android keyboard, and it's red because it came with my theme for the Cyanogen mod, so it's a little bit different, but it's a stock keyboard. It just has a different look to it. But I want to change it. I don't want to use this keyboard. How do I change this keyboard? I want to hold down anywhere on the text box and you put input method. Click on that and you will see it says Android keyboard or Swift key X. I want to select the Swift key X and now I wait and then just popped up right now and I just got the Swift key X keyboard. What's so cool about this keyboard? Like I said, it predicts your sentences. So let's say I am number four. I actually typed in I am number four for a movie that I wanted to save on my phone so I can go rent and look at that it's already inputted it saves everything in your SD cards how do you set wallpapers and widgets we have the option to press our menu click on add if you have that and you will see that you can click on widgets that's one way to set widgets or you can just hold down on an empty spot of your screen and click on widgets from right there and set them however you want. Never send any of your widgets to SD card because they need to run on your phone memory in order for it to work. How do you set live wallpapers? Same way using settings or clicking on here where it says wallpapers and you will see I got the functions here that might be different than yours but here is live wallpapers and I can pick the live wallpaper from here. One that you guys always see on every one of my videos is called WP Clock. I absolutely love it. And here is the time, the date, and the year with my percentage of my battery. And I just put a custom picture in the back of this live wallpaper of just an Android peeking out. How do you change the lock screen? Let's go to location and security. Okay, you will see setup screen lock. Here you will have a none, which means just a normal slide to unlock your screen. Or if you want to set a pattern, click on pattern. It'll tell you what you need to do, how to set it up and you will make a configure of a pattern that you want you want. Here's an example of how to do it. Let's go next. I'll draw to unlock a pattern. Let's do this. So now pattern recorded. I must do the same thing again. And your number, unlock pattern, and then confirm, and it is set. So let's turn off my phone and turn it back on. Now I have a pattern to unlock it with. And there, I just unlocked screen. If you don't want that one, let's change it. You want a pin, you will insert a pin number to unlock your phone. Now, if you want to set a password, you can set a password by typing in whatever you want as a password. Lock your screen so that nobody can get into your phone without you knowing the passwords, the pins, or the pattern. Wireless and networks. Here you will see I can put the phone in airplane mode, which means no more calls, texts, or internet, no 3G, no nothing. Just completely makes your phone just be like a cool little tablet. But if you have your Wi-Fi on, you're able to use your Wi-Fi. So if you have Wi-Fi calling, Wi-Fi texting, or Wi-Fi games to do it, you can. It just turns all your networks off. But I got to tell you guys, if you have your Wi-Fi on, this is one thing that uses your battery in the background. If you're not going to be around Wi-Fi, you're out and about, your Wi-Fi is constantly searching for a Wi-Fi connection, and so that's using your battery because it's trying to search for Wi-Fi. So if you know you're not going to be using Wi-Fi or away from Wi-Fi, turn it off so it doesn't use your battery. That's one tip to use to save battery. Wi-Fi settings, you will see here, this will notify you when there's a network available for you and then you can you know sign in with the webp your password if it doesn't have it so if you want to connect bluetooth headsets or other keyboards or devices whatever you want to connect through this is the way to do it and i got tethering and portable hotspot this came with my nexus one rom if you click on mobile network you will see that there's an extra setting here that says data enabled and if i actually check this off i have quick settings up here because i'm a custom cyanogen model like i keep saying 
I'm going to turn that off. That's my Wi-Fi. And you will see that my 3G will start connecting. And there it is because my Wi-Fi just turned off. So 3G is back on. Now, if I don't want to have my 3G on, say my phone is dying or I don't want to waste my data right now because some of my apps in the background use data. I don't want that. I want to disable my data. How do I do that? This is how I'll do it. I click on that and you will see that my 3G just turned off right now. So now I won't be able to use the Internet. I won't have my applications trying to take data down from whatever app that I have that needs it. And so it'll save me a whole bunch of battery because it's no longer a little get data like connections but don't worry you'll be able to talk and text and now if you just want to use 2g networks you can just click on that instead of having 3g you can just connect with 2g now a lot of you guys want pop-ups I use handset messenger because I love the customizations that you can do you can customize the colors font the layout the background and if I click on this one right here so you can see I laid out my bubble chats this way and you can actually customize every little notification setting so you can set a separate text sound for this person so you can set them individually for all your other friends out there here's ADW gesture that I'm gonna slide up on the screen to open up my app drawer that's why I love ADW and other launchers do it too I know but ADW is my favorite guys stock messenger and this is what the stock messenger looks like it's okay people don't mind it but it's kind of plain for me and I don't like it this way and I want to customize it more and I want to be more individual for when someone texts me I can hear the tone I know who it is right away and the second thing is that you don't get pop-up notifications with this so I don't use this application now before you end up getting a separate messenger app you need to know that you need to come to your stock messenger go to your menu go to your settings and you want to check off notification settings Display message notification and status bar. You want to uncheck this. You want to make sure you have this unchecked so that you don't get double notifications. Now I'm going to send myself a text message. Turn my screen off. And I just got my pop-up notification. Instead of having to open up my phone to read what it was, I can just see the pop-up notification. But I use Handset, and I love that you can just reply from right here and say whatever you want, or you can hear what the message says, delete it, look at the contact, voice, respond, more settings here to set, or put it in emoji, standard, or emoji. Now let's put cool. And I reply, and it sends it, and it'll be a message right there that says the message was replied. Something Android users might not have known that you can do for the stock messenger or any other messengers that you download. You can hold down on that text message and you can forward them. You can copy the message text or you can you see you can have other more settings there you can do. And I want to delete this message because I don't want anybody in case they grab my phone or you know whatever. I just deleted it off so now it's off. Many of you guys probably are going to be very happy you found this out. And my bird wants to come and say hello. Huh? You got to remember that some applications store a whole bunch of stuff on your SD card. And how do you manage your SD card? You want to get any file manager that you can get to. It don't really matter which one. Just use when I come with file manager. File manager allows me to see everything that's on my SD card. Now before you start moving things around or deleting stuff, I need you guys to know that now you can delete some of your saved data from applications that you installed or you need. So you gotta make sure you don't delete stuff that you don't know what it's about. I wanted to click down on there and I press delete and I'll press delete it and yes I was sure and now it's off the SD card and it's a great way to delete the bloatware that the application left behind or still has any other files that you want to manage through your SD card you can go through here and file managers aren't really stock on Android so you have to kind of download that separately and lastly for the people who have force closed problems or some things running really slow and they can't figure it out in order to refresh your phone you want to turn off and on your phone at least once a week. Just like a computer, a TV, any gadget, you want to kind of turn it off. Let it rest. Let it cool down for even 10 seconds. It's a major big, big difference. And you just turn it off and on. Fixed some problems that your phone had and might start a lot quicker. Hope I helped many of you guys out. And as always, please rate, comment, and subscribe. And don't forget to spread the word. And remember to check out my other videos of the best Android apps and games of the weeks. Thank you for watching, guys. Android rules. And I'll see you next time.